in the business. Um, but we are having a very, very special friend that is going spending some time with us tonight. And thank you so much, Bea. Um, it feels like we are strangers because we don't see each other. What is it now? <laughs> Almost 14, 15 months. Um, and yeah, so uh, most of you know Bia, a president's team member. She started the business in Europe and uh, will share her own story. But we are so privileged that she decided that Cape Town is her next home. And I know that she's now probably more a South African than she is a German. Um, or am I being a bit brave there, uh, Bea? But you've been with us for 12 years now. 12 years in Cape Town. 13 years. 13 years. 13 years. Wow. Okay. 13 years. Wow. So um, we love to work with you and I respect you so much for everything that you do. And as I said, you know, we've work, been working together, you, uh, Sean and myself, for so many years with the BBSs and, you know, always had the same philosophy in the business. So thank you so much for taking time out and sharing your story tonight. We've got some newbies here tonight. Some people only just did their first 500 uh, PPV. Some are brand new supervisors. And then we have leaders. But I'm going to hand it straight over to you. Um, and uh, I, again, I want the guys to please open your mics. Let's show Bia um, a little bit of energy. Let's uh, shout out loud and make her feel very, very welcome. So can you all just open those mics? If you can't open your camera, it's okay. But if you can open your camera also and give her a big wave and a hoo hoo and a, like a welcome. Simply the best, make a noise. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, we're back to Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you near volume point. Your biggest fan, Michael. Michael. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Seeing you all safe in your homes, and thank you so much for giving me the honor here being on the call. Amori, I know you're waving properly. Baby is crying in the background and you're just cool smiling. Go through that. Okay, <laughs> I can let's only wait, let's wait. Now that we're going to take a picture and capture it. <laughs> Okay. Good evening, everybody, and I'm super excited to be here today. It feels almost like an H or M in the good old days, seeing a couple of old faces, not meaning that you look old because you take care of a life, so you look from day to day younger and younger, and um, but also seeing a couple of new faces here. Some I see only the tempting bodies, I must say. Uh, Mo, this looks absolutely amazing. So I work on that, that I can't be one. No, I don't do this photo, okay? <laughs> but good Ooh, evening, can. everybody. So thank you very much for having me here on the call. And a huge, huge congratulation. As far as I know, this is a qualifier call. So everybody has to achieve a minimum of 500,000, uh, 500,000, uh, 500 person purchase volume points. And I know that even some of you are qualified for the later call we have in approximately 30 minutes after I have shared my story where we want to go a little bit more into the nitty gritty and you had a far higher qualification. So well done for that. Um, extremely important to always go for every qualification and every promotion and you never know what you get out of it. So I, I really, try to deliver my best. And even when I share just my story, and even when you think, oh, I know Bea's story, I have packaged my story today a little bit differently. Not that my story is different, but I thought I'd go a little bit into the nitty gritty because A, I have a little bit more time and B, you are not a brand, brand new member anymore. You have achieved already something. And I think you should also learn that things happen along the way and you want to learn a little bit what happens along the way? How do you handle things like that? But we will also go into that a little bit later. So my name is Bea Corey. I uh, got started. Let me share a little bit my presentation that we have a couple of photos. Uh, da, 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 da. There we are. Slideshow. 
from the beginning. Noah can't take this call. I'm sorry. Also, when you sign up a new member, you can handle that on your own right now. So that's me, Bia Cory. I'm 26 years now in Herbalife. I actually feel 26, but unfortunately not 26 anymore. <laughs> and um, this is me when I got out started, actually, <laughs> so that you also see my parents when they were younger and you see me and my brother. So we are a small little family, actually. And I grew up in a very humble family. This is what I wanted to share with you. So I wasn't born into a family where we know about entrepreneurship and where my parents are into entrepreneurs. My parents were always hard, hard working. Uh, my dad had at times uh, two or three jobs at the time to just basically make it a better living from the, uh, for the family. And this is what I took actually from my parents. And this is what I'm entirely grateful for. They taught me always the les lesson, not in telling me, but because I saw it, hard work leads really that you achieve something. And sometimes you need to put the extra hours in. And something which I took from my dad, which actually serves me up till today, is that latest on a Sunday evening, I sit down, if not on a Friday evening, and I plan my week ahead, I plan my month ahead. And this is what he always did. And we saw it as children and we never understood why the door from the office was closed and dad needed his uh, uh, quiet time now to plan out his week. My dad was sometimes during the week, not at home. And this is where we learned as children very quickly, some sacrifice are necessary. I only understand it today, basically, because we need to sacrifice also a little bit our private time. Um, but make it a little bit short. I don't want to talk about the whole childhood story. And I'm sure you have your old child, uh, own childhood story. But sometimes you see, we, we see not really the, the lessons what our parents learned from us. And if your parents right now, your children learn lessons from you. And sometimes I think we feel guilty that we don't spend enough time with our children or loved ones. But we need to understand this sacrifice actually serves them later well well. This building I want to show you because I wasn't a good student at all. I wasn't good at school at all. I left school actually in, you would say, grade 10. Um, so um, school was my favorite subject. And somehow I learned very quickly to make a little bit of pocket money when I was 14 years old because my dad told me, if you want to have the extra things and your pocket money is not enough, have a holiday job and uh, work a little bit more. And I learned that money is actually something very nice. And this made me decide at grade 10 to leave the school and look for a job. And I had actually two different job offers. So just that you learn a little bit more about myself. The one job offer was working for a bank where we had to wear a uniform. And the other job was in insurance where I could wear whatever I wanted to wear. So guess what I did? I wanted never ever to be in a uniform. Bea is not a uniform type of person. So I decided to go for the insurance. Also, they paid very well. And funny enough, all of a sudden, I loved learning. All of a sudden, I became the best student ever. And very quickly after I have um, had basically there my training on the job, um, with 21, year, I, 21 years old, I found myself in a leading position. For those who don't, didn't figure it out so far, I'm German. I grew up in Germany. So I was in a leading position when I was 21 years old. Um, you can compare it here with a management position. And um, I was now like, all of a sudden, let me go. What else do I have to study? I did evening studies. And I went to my boss at that time. I said, boss, what do I have to study now to get the next higher position? The next higher position was a managing um, director. So it was very um, ambitious, actually. And he laughed at me and said, you are a woman. I said, what's wrong with being a woman? He said, you could fall pregnant. You could be a risk for the company. And by the way, the guy who is on the position you want to have, he came there because he had special con connections to the, um, to, to the, to the leadership. Uh, you don't have that kind of connections. And he's 40 right now. You need to wait till he retires. That's another 20 years. Let me give you a good advice. Be happy with what you have. I was shocked, but at the same time, looking back now, entirely grateful. Because there's where I realized I worked hard 
to get to that position there, a lot of people were actually envy because I got that at a very young age, but there was all of a sudden a stop where somebody said to me, it doesn't matter what you're willing to bring to the table, you're not going anywhere. And this was for me the time where I decided I want to work on my own. Fortunately, at that time, um, I met my then later husband. He was also in insurance. We decided to go on our own and started our own insurance business. And because we both were work, used very to work very hard, we had a, um, we were brokers. We worked also in investment, and we made a very very good money. But to be honest, money is not everything. I wasn't fulfilled at all. I was tired in the morning when I got up. I was tired in the evening when I went to bed. I was tired on the weekends. I drained myself. I trained on top of that very much because I wanted to be in a better space. I wanted to look better. I wanted to lose weight and nothing really happened. The only thing what happened was the chocolate cravings at nighttime. And then one day, a friend of Andy, my ex-husband came along and gave us Herbalife. So the gift of Herbalife came along. And I want that you make the note, Herbalife is a gift. Herbalife finds you at the right time. You just need to realize that. And we started the products very, very skeptically. Um, I didn't believe at that time. Now think back 26 years ago, Herbalife wasn't that popular. There wasn't a Cristiano Ronaldo using the products and was a brand ambassador. There was actually, Elsa knows that, almost nothing as a reputation, yeah? And it was powders and pills, which wasn't really popular 26 years ago. It's now in to have a shape that time it wasn't really in it was in to have your salad out of their own garden anyhow long story short i started to use the products because i wanted to prove to that friend that stuff like that doesn't work boy oh boy i was surprised <laughs> um, not just that i got lots of energy almost instantly and the energy never left me um, I, I lost the cravings for chocolate. I mean, look at the shape difference when you see that little belly on the left photo. This is not that I was pregnant, not at all. Yeah, but look at the difference now, the photo from then and the photo to now and the shape I have. So it makes me entirely proud, actually, the products. And one thing I can tell you, if anything would fail in my business, I still would continue to use the products. And this is the lesson number one. How committed are you to the product and to your own product result? I think I see it with Elsa. I see it with a lot of you who are on the call right now and me included. We are working daily on being the best version of ourselves and looking really the best. And if you're brand, brand new in the business, make that as a note, work hard on your own product result. And don't forget that we have also skincare products. Look at the difference of the skincare range, what it does to me. You see me here without makeup just now on the call, a little bit of blush, a little bit the eyelashes. I'm not the type of a makeup. But if you look at the photo on the very left, this was 2014. I was already on Herbalife, but I was always wearing thick layers of makeup because I didn't like my skin, as you can imagine. Since then, a month later, I'm almost all the time without really a makeup or foundation. It's just a little bit for the cheeks sometimes when we go into winter. But other than that, I save so much money, not buying all the time these thick, thick foundations and stuff like that. Besides that, it feels much more natural. And understand, when you have a good skin and people can see that, people ask you, what are you doing? And boom, you have an extra business talking about our skincare, hair care, and all the amazing products. So if you haven't used the skincare range yet, Please, 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 please. I beg you on, 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 on knees, actually, really try the products. They are amazing. And on top of that, I must tell you, you buy from your own shop. You never want to miss out to buy from your own shop. I mean, what a pity when you buy shampoo or body lotion or stuff like that from, from other shops and bring them the money. Whereas you can buy from your own shop, getting discount on it, and you get volume points on it, and it brings you to higher discounts. You don't want to miss that out. So just on a side note, Elsa, I hope you don't mind, but this is just a passion of mine.
So these are a couple of men I want to introduce quickly um, to you who changed something in my life. Um, first of all, and most important, the founder Mark Hughes next to me on the photo on the left. Um, we were very fortunate on a get team level to meet Mark Hughes in person um, prior actually January 95. Um, we were at our first extravaganza and at that time we were on a world team level, but I must honestly say not on a consistent level. Maybe I should share there more later on with the leadership, what there actually happened. But this extravaganza, and this is what I want, the next note, what you hopefully take is write down extravaganza and write down attend every event. So we had actually to fly from Germany all the way to America to attend this extravaganza, to see the founder the very first time live on stage. And my life changed through that. I had no idea why I go to that extravaganza. We only went because everybody said, go to the extravaganza, go to the extravaganza. And only when I said, okay, we go, we found out it's actually in America and we have to fly all the way to the US. And I'm a kind of a person, maybe you want to make another mental note or, or an actual note. When I say A, I do B. So it would not have been possible for my personality to say, okay, I go. But after I found out it's US, I don't go. When I say A, I do B. Do you understand? So we made the plan actually. At that time, we weren't full time in the Herbalife business. So it was a little bit difficult to organize everything. But we got everything in that extravaganza where I went to and had no idea why I went there. But this was actually the event where we decided and we're gonna do this until we qualify president team. So we were actually almost on a level like you, but we had that clear vision all of a sudden. And there was in between, this was just stepping stones. So we took it very, very serious. We put on our blinkers and from January, having not a stable volume, and I explain that later on a little bit more, all of a sudden from January till May, we were fully qualified global expansion team. So this was actually that photo, what I show you here with Mark Hughes and the man next to him is Andy. This is my, at that time, husband, now ex-husband. I will share that in a moment also as well. But the beauty in this business is also, you can go through difficult times like it was for me a divorce. I got divorced 13 years ago, but we are still very, very good friends. And I want to share this actually with you as we have a little bit more time. When a divorce happens, that's a story on its own. But most of the divorces happen ugly because of fights of money. Are you aware of that? Sometimes you hear it maybe. I hope you didn't have a situation like that. The beauty in Herbalife, we learned so much in personal skills and for our personal life that we could handle that we realized we don't fit anymore together, but we had never any financial errors or fights or anything like that, because obviously on a president team level, there is enough money. And we never ever had personal issues. So we could go apart, but still being friends and working together. And this goes back actually to a lot of lessons we learned through Mark Hughes, through Jim Ron. So you learn a lot from these trainers, and even when they are not anymore amongst us, but their trainings are there. So please use these lessons to build your business, but also to build your, personal, your, your uh, personality. And, and one quote, which goes with me all my life, is basically one quote we got from Jim Ron at one training in 1998. Um, I have it here actually on my desk. I, I got it signed. I don't know if you see that. And, and this message basically from Jin Ron was in a personal training, he shared that. And this I made actually to my vision. Let others lead small lives, but not you. Let others argue over small things, but not you. Let others cry over small hurts, but not you. Let others leave their future in someone else's hand, but not you. And this was my guideline actually for my entire life. So I'm entirely grateful for had these trainings and this specific training with Jim Ron we had 1998 um, changed really something else in my life. 
it was at a point where we learned a little bit about personal development and I started to read the books. I help you do some personal development every single morning. But I was basically reading the books and going through the pages and not really doing something. And when I was in the training with Jim Ron, he said to us, write down 50 goals you have for your life. What do you want to achieve at the end of the day? And I wrote in my notebook, write down 50 goals. And I was waiting that he tells us the next story and goes on with his lecture. And he didn't say anything till I realized he was waiting till we write down 50 things we want to achieve in, my, in, in our life. And you want to make that as a little homework if you have never ever looked at your goals. So in the past there before I wrote always, I knew I have to set goals. I knew I should have a vision board, but I never wrote it down. And I always say, I have it in my head. I don't need to write it down. And this was the very first time because Jim Ron sat there and was waiting for all this was a small training circle. We were so privileged that we were qualified for that training. And he was waiting till everybody was re ready with his 50 points. And then only he continued with his training. Boy, oh boy, you think it's easy to write quickly down 50 things you want to have in life? Make the exercise and you will realize it's not easy. But when I wrote it down and he helped us to work out basically what is our main drive then I got actually to the point that I became unstoppable. And from there, in, in three years, basically later, we qualified then for the president team. So we got there, actually, another training which changed something. And you never know which training actually changes your life. And on top of this list, the major part, actually, what I wanted to achieve is living in a country close to the sea where I can walk on the sea on a beautiful long beach every single morning. I had no idea where this is. This was 1998, I wrote that down. At that time, I didn't even know where South Africa really is on the map, to be honest. The only African part I touched till then was Kenya for a safari, but nothing else. And you know, life happens in many different funny ways. And I don't want to make it too long, but through circumstances, actually, we ended up in a holiday. And up till that moment, we always qualified. Actually, this was the millionaire still in, in a millionaire team level. We always qualified for the vacations with Herbalife. That's another note you want to make. Always qualify for the vacations. Yeah. And we said, okay, we work hard for the vacations because we knew when we work hard for the vacations and achieve the vacations, we have holiday, the holidays is paid. Be clever, yeah? So you work hard, you get holidays and the holidays are paid and you get back and you earn actually more money. So it's not like usual holiday, you come home and you're broke. You earn more money because you worked hard before you're on a different level and yeah. So that's a complete different story. But we had one of our goals was actually when we hit a certain target, we make extra holiday and we go on a trip the way we always liked it. And we basically went for a four week holiday and we wanted to go to Vietnam and for circumstances, political issues in that country didn't happen. And the travel agency suggested to us go to South Africa. And we were like, what the heck should we do now in South Africa? But Okay, let's go to South Africa. I thought it's similar to Kenya, Safari, I don't know, yeah. This is really the attitude I had. And we were so pleasantly surprised about the kindness, the friendliness. We, we landed in Joburg, we took a car for four weeks and just traveled around in South Africa and fell in love with the country. And in that holiday, this is why I want to uh, share it with you. We came to Nysna, we came to Brenton and Sea, if you know Brenton and Sea, and we fell in love with Brenton and Sea. And we basically, in that holiday, we bought a plot in Brenton on Sea, and not a small plot. It was up on the hill. It was one of the most expensive they have there. And we paid it just from our monthly check. So just that you understand the earnings sometimes where you don't have trouble or need to take bonds or stuff like that. And we were not certain what we do with that plot, but we felt so tempted because it was 
the first time actually, and we came home and we said, what the heck did we do now? But we ended up actually half a year later to build their house, um, which became for six months always our summer destination. So we spent basically six months in South Africa for the summertime, obviously, and six months first in Austria, then later on in Marbella, because Marbella, Spain is a little bit warmer than Austria, we figured out. So we were really like swallows. We were like, can I say that, retired? This was my dream that I work hard, president team, and then chill a little bit, relax a little bit, and do a little bit less. I don't know if anybody of you has that dream. Maybe say, open quickly your microphone and say, yes, me, yes, me, yes, me. <laughs> anybody? <laughs> I can do with that. <laughs> oh, lovely. So I did that actually, yeah, for a very long time till I was bored from walking on the beach and till, and, and this was also a time when Andy and I discovered we, we lived together as good friends, but we weren't really that married couple anymore where, where we had goals together and we said, okay, let's go our separate ways. And it was a fair, basically, um, a way forward. And um, so, but entirely grateful, actually, what, what happens over the years. Um, and, and this is where I have a, a huge gratitude for, for everything Herbalife has done for us in the past and still is doing. It's absolutely, absolutely incredible. All these travels, if it was with Herbalife, through Herbalife, the vacations, the events we had, but also having enough money to fulfill myself a couple of dreams which I had, like hiking the Machu Picchu, for example, in Peru, or other beautiful destinations I had on my map and, and on my goal list. So it's absolutely mind boggling. Or taking my brother, like you see on the right hand side on the on a cruise, for example. So it's it's really for me, it's mind boggling that life we have with Herbalife. life. But also paying back to my parents and to my family. Our family is small. And when we got started and we had the, the, the idea of qualifying and the goal of qualifying for president team, we learned that we have to bring sacrifice to the table. For us, it was almost every weekend being at the STS seminar. So we had two day seminars. And um, that meant that a couple, of holiday, uh, a couple of birthdays, we couldn't be with the family, a couple of events. And my parents, I remember they often asked, why do you need to go again to a seminar? Haven't you learned what you have to learn? And I was like, yes, but we have new guests and we have new team members and I want to be there with them because I want to guide them and want to help them in the beginning. So they never understood the bigger picture. But what was in my mind is actually one day when we qualify for the president team, one day when I have achieved my goal and live in a foreign country, then I will invite them and they can enjoy the beauty of a complete different life. And this is actually what you see now with my parents, besides our COVID story. Uh, my parents are every year with me in South Africa. They spend usually three, four months, the winter time in Germany. They come to me to South Africa and we spend incredible holidays. And only now I realize actually what I have done to you. You know, with COVID, the travel wasn't possible. But there is not one day I don't talk to my parents. And my mother told me recently, you know what? I'm so grateful for everything what you did for us when we were in South Africa, because at the moment I live from these memories. I go through all these photos and um, they keep me actually engaged and looking forward when we come, can come uh, to South Africa again. My mom is now one, uh, 82, my dad is um, 80 years old. And, and they just live from these memories I have created in the last couple of years. And so we plan obviously when everything goes right that my parents come again to South Africa. Um, but, but this is what I want to share with you. If I imagine now I would have heard of my boss in the, at the insurance and I would have stuck in that job where I was secure for the rest of my life, my parents would have never experienced what you see right now here on the photos and much, much more than that because I took them to, to some incredible places and helicopter flights and stuff like that. I hope you understand that a little bit. So the sacrifice you do when you do it for the right reasons with the right uh, uh, with the right intentions, then nothing is a problem. 
When I came back 13 years ago, um, Elsa has five more minutes, okay? I, I don't have time actually here right now. Yeah? Yeah, 100%. Okay. Um, so when I came back to South Africa and when I decided, okay, let's get to work again because life retired at my age is a little bit boring. Let me do something. I was alone. I didn't know anybody in Cape Town. And this is where I want to give hope to each one of you who is maybe here brand, brand new on the call. Um, maybe you came to the area where you live right now and you don't know, or you think you don't know many people. I didn't know anybody. The only thing what I knew is put the badge on and go to a Herbalife Opportunity Meeting. Now at the moment, we don't have too many live events. So if you have in your organization some form of person mingling, fit camp, whatever, go there, just mingle with the people. It's so, so important. But this is what I did basically. And this is where I got the first connection to Elsa. Elsa, thank you very much. And to a lot of other leaders, basically. Mike Lau was already there. Ace Nim was already there. So a lot of people actually, they are just all of a sudden, because I was wearing the badge, they just welcomed me. It didn't know me really, but we got to know each other. And this is how I started actually to build in a team in South Africa. This is why I say you are never alone. You, you build your own family, but you are part also of a bigger family. It's like in real life, actually. Yeah. Um, so the bigger family, the extended family, the, your, your Herbalife family is basically your team you're building, but then the extended family is basically all our brothers and sisters and sidelines, like Elsa, um, who is one of my dearest travel buddies, we know how to have a cocktail together. We know how to party together. We know how to keep a seat for each other when we go to events. Yes, we care really about each other. We share room already together. So we know how we look at the pajamas in the morning. And um, it, it's absolutely amazing. And you see here other people, some of them you know probably from the vacations, from being in Singapore. This is, for example, in Singapore, um, vacations in Turkey. And you basically see at these events the successful people. So if you want to be successful in the future, you want to go to every single event you can go. First of all, qualify and then attend. And attend really all the events you can. So it's absolutely mind-boggling. And you know, when you're in a position that you have gotten much, then you have also the gift that you can give back, basically. So you know that we have the Herbalife Nutrition uh, Foundation um, that we support Acres of Love. Um, this is where I like to get involved. Um, some of know, you have seen maybe on, on Facebook photos or stuff like that, or when we make the Father Christmas for them and things like that. And I know many of you also do in their small way or big way, lots of contributions in their community. If it is a soup kitchen, if it is what, whatever you do, the smallest thing, the biggest thing, everything counts. And this is what I'm grateful for. Um, what, what Herbalife has given me is not just the the position, it's actually besides the position, the person I became through all humbling circumstances I had in my life, um, through all the lessons I learned from Mark Hughes and from Jim Ron and all other incredible leaders I met along the way, including also Elsa and Ace. I must say I'm entirely, entirely grateful for the journey. And this is maybe my last message for you before we go into the leadership training a little bit later now. I um, really want to share with you, I, I hope I could give you some value with that. And I know that there will be circumstances up and downs, basically, in your life where you feel probably close to, oh, I think I quit, mm, a customer maybe um, uh, didn't, didn't repurchase or you, a member didn't sign up and who, who actually said they want to sign up at the end of the month. So we all know this situation. And what we learned along the way is actually that's part of the game. Some will, some won't, so what? So get that ex attitude basically of having a no excuse attitude, having an attitude of there's always a solution. And maybe one of my personal commitments, um, what I want to give you 
with you on your way for your personal life, but also for your business life. The challenges you get in your life, as little or as tough as they are right now, they are there to make you stronger. And especially when you feel you can't deal with that situation, this is actually where you need to be the most grateful because you are stronger than you think right now. You can conquer everything. I believe strongly we only get the challenges in our life which we really can solve. But we need to look a little bit from above and say, okay, where's the solution? And when you start to be a solution-driven person, instead of saying, oh no, why does this always happen to me? When you rather say, where's the solution? I find a solution. When you have that kind of attitude, the solution will come to you. So please, please, please do me this favor. Never, 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 ever give up. I can't wait till Elsa says to me, listen, this one is a president team. Listen, this one is a president team. And listen, that one is a president team. And Elsa is inviting me to your training so that I can learn from you. So thank you very much for having this special slot for all the 500 PPB. Thank you very much for inviting me. And from the bottom of my heart, I really wish you power, energy, and that you really fly like Elsa was playing my one of my favorite songs actually in the beginning, that you really fly, fly, fly. The time was never, ever better. And I think you know that you have heard it often enough. Go for the Leadership Development Weekend. If you're brand, brand new, just have done your 500 PPV, please make sure that you qualify for the Leadership Development Weekend. There's still time enough to do it if you put your mind to it. So thank you. Back to you, Elsa. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Baya, thank you so much. Um, so many gems in that amazing story. And thank you for sharing it. And well done to everybody that is qualified. Unfortunately, we have to say goodbye to you and all our leaders that's done to uh, 2.5 2. and above will stay for a very special time with Baya, where she's really going to share some leadership tips. So thank you to everyone. Bye-bye, Norita. Well done for qualifying. Bye-bye, Carol. Um, bye. Bye, Michelle. Um, bye, Gertrude, Melinda. Um, uh, okay, so the leaders will stay behind. Thank you, Nicola. And Melinda, bye-bye, bye-bye. Um, Agonda. Um, Michelle, so now we have the leaders stay behind. So well done to you guys. Done. Thank you, Mishka. You can go. So we'll just give them a minute or so to leave us. We don't want to bump anyone. Um, so this is the special time now um, with Bia for the leaders. Please, if you can open your mics that she can see your faces that we can recognize you all. So you know many of them, um, Bia, you know Amory, and you know Virgil, Ambrose, Denise, uh, Reina's from Namibia. She's a brand new world team, just attended the first world team school. Marta Bignal, oh. Laverne, Marty Joubert from Nelspreit, um, Claudine van der Westers, and Carly Sardane has just done her second cut, two and a half. Kersh has just done world team, was also in her first world team school. And then we have a galaxy here that is behind the camera. Who's this galaxy? Ace, is it you? Please come out from behind the camera that we can see who it is. Great. So over to you, Bia. We want to hear your wisdom in leadership. Okay. It is Ace that's oh, sitting sure, on sure. this couch there. <laughs> So first of all, congratulations to all the qualifications I heard just now. You are on the go. So that makes me a little bit more nervous to say nothing wrong. <laughs> so we just and, friends. We just friends. <laughs> it, it reminds me to my early days, Elsa. Um, I think I was on the get team level or so. And um, Marcus Lehmann, our chairman's club member upline, um, was standing next to me. So you must imagine for those who maybe only know the virtual events, 
Now we are at a big PBS with three, 400 people. I have the next slot. So nothing dramatic because obviously chairman's club member makes the, the guest speaker story at the end. But Marco stands next to me and say, don't mess it up now. <laughs> and I was about to walk on stage and you know, normally you should say something encouraging. And Marcus was always like that. And he said, don't mess it up right now. Do you know how nervous I was? I was anyway nervous because a chairman's club member, if you don't know a chairman's club member is somebody who has a minimum of five president team in, their, uh, uh, in, in separate lines. And uh, so I was super, super nervous. So just said, you know, also, don't say that now, okay. <laughs> Biel, I've got a, a classic story, but I, I won't take the time now. <laughs> well, my very first meeting, I was so nervous. I went to the bathroom um, just before I went up on stage and I was there were, I had a white suit on and um, I, you know, those days we had transparencies. Do you remember the, the projector with the transparencies? And Ace, uh, Ace made the transparencies, he put it down. I did the talk and there was somebody in the front row that was holding up this paper all the time. He's holding up a paper. And I decided I'm not going to look at this, I'm so nervous. And in the end, he it was said zip. So my fly was open <laughs> throughout the whole training. <laughs> And he was trying to tell me, but I just decided I'm not looking. <laughs> so, you know, we all have these like gory stories of the early days. And yeah, so, but it's, you know, it's such great memories that we have. <laughs> Maybe one more story comes there to my mind. And have a life opportunity meeting. You know that already, like you have on Thursday, brilliant online meeting. So thank you very much for always putting it together, Elsa and all the leaders from you. I really appreciate. Um, but the live meeting, okay. And again, Marcus Lehmann, we always crashed a little bit because we have a, both a strong personality. So anyhow, um, you know, we queuing up in the live event and I share my income story there and I mean, I have so much to tell about my story, you know? I mean, all, you, you know that, I mean, when we talk, then we talk, yeah? I mean, as nervous as we are, and I was fairly new, I was maybe, I don't know, will team or get team, but I share my story really into detail, okay? But there was no time anymore for the higher stories. And the higher story was Marcus Lehmann, chairman club member, <laughs> which lead up to, he said later on to me, you know that the highest check has the longest time to talk. You gave me not even a minute, but you were talking 10 minutes, there's something wrong, or do you earn more money than me? <laughs> I was clear, okay. In future, I have a very short story. <laughs> but why I like to share that actually, it was for me interesting, he understood my personality. so. I could handle to be a little bit tough to me, rather say it tough and direct instead of holding back or well done. And it was just what I did. Okay. So, and, and we're talking now leadership here. Can, yeah. And, and I think sometimes we, we can be just quite frank and direct because when we understand what he wanted to do with that is helping me for the future. Yeah. He just packaged it his, in his way. And I was maybe the first moment I was like, hey, what is he telling me? I'm an adult. I know what to do. But then I gave it a thought and thought he would not say anything to harm me. He just helps me basically to become a better leader because everything what I do is duplicating. So he prevents that I duplicate the wrong stuff and rather helps me with the right stuff. There was another event comes just to my mind. Actually, I have something else in my notes, but I come to that right now. I was invited as a guest speaker when Turkey opened. And Marcus Lehmann was there also. <laughs> it was a little bit my guideline <laughs> in between. So Marcus Lehmann was also there, Chairman's Club member. And um, I did the product part and I really was good. And he was happy with what I did and what I said. This was all fine but it came a little bit to the dress code, but I didn't know. So 
back in Germany, we had a train the trainers. I don't know if you ever heard about the well, train you did, the trainers. You did one yeah in Cape Town, in Seapoint. Uh -huh. I remember clearly, yes. And, and he was basically talking about how to speak, how to dress yourself, blah, 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 blah. And up to this point, I mean, if you know me, you know Elsa, we always look that we look the path. And I know all of most of you, I know personally from the life events, you always look the path and really you, you put effort into and think, what are you wearing? And so did I up till the, the, this event. And then he said, and then you must also understand not just that you dress yourself absolutely chic and, and fancy and looking good. You need to also understand your audience. And still, it didn't click to me. And then he said, especially when you're in Turkey and understand that this is a Muslim culture. And when you are on stage, that you don't wear a miniskirt. Ne bea? I was wearing a miniskirt and I loved that costume so much what I had. It was my most fanciest costume I had. And I was wearing it in Turkey for the official opening of the country in front of a thousand or more people on stage with a mini skirt. So from there I learned the skirt had to be a little bit longer. <laughs> So just another side note that you can laugh a little bit about me. So I did a lot of mistakes and this is maybe good that I share it, even when it wasn't planned for me like that. I did a lot of mistakes, but I never gave up. I learned from it. It didn't break me. It made me actually to the person I became today because I was open to learn. I was open to understand that this is for me not about my ego. So I had to learn to take my ego back in order to learn and become a leader. Does that make sense in a way? Yeah, don't take it personal. Yeah. Fabulous, fabulous. So uh, I, I took a couple of notes and, and maybe we make it for, yeah, that I share these notes a little bit with you and then we open up for a couple of questions, questions because I would rather like to hear what questions you have. But I think these notes are also making probably a little bit sense for the one or other person who is here on the call. The number one, what I like often to talk about also in my self conversations is your thoughts are powerful. Whatever you think you start to attract. So meaning basically, when, when you think, ah, oh, I don't get customers, my customers always this, my customers are always that, you attract actually that kind of energy. Whereas when you find a, a self-conversation, a, a way of positive, I don't want to say positive thinking because you still need to put the action in, but the thought always comes first, yeah? When you think, I attract customer all the time. I attract nice customers all the time. Do you think you're a little bit kinder when you make a post or when you, when somebody approaches you because of your badge you're wearing? Yeah. When you have that kind of attitude that you, I attract always nice customers instead of thinking the people don't have money right now. There's no people with money at the moment. We attract automatically people with no money. Or before we even talk, we think this person has no money because where they come from. So this is where when, when you realize, and this is, I make that often as a self-analysis. I'm not perfect, yeah? So you have your good days and you have your bad days. And, and I looked and just, hey, what I'm thinking just now. And sometimes I need to write it out. And this is why the, you hear that often from, from people who are successful, that they take early morning, the first hour actually for personal development. Yeah. So getting up, there's the 5 a.m. club or whatever appeals to you um, to get up early and use that as a personal development time where you also journal a little bit your thoughts. Then you just have that self-conversation and you realize you talk, you think negative stuff, then to find a way to shift it around. Yeah. I learned, for example, a very simple affirmation. Some of you know Robin Banks. I was at a couple of trainings with Robin Banks. 
Um, he loves actually that song. It's part of his uh, presentation as well, Elsa. I don't know if you have it from there. Um, but yeah. one of his affirmations I, I have applied to my life every day in every way, it's getting better and better. Every way in every day in no, every day and every, every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. So when, when I have a situation, let's say now, I feel a little bit fluish. To make a simple example, I can say to myself, oh, I think I get the flu. Oh, I feel so tired. Oh, I feel this. I feel that. Or I can say every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. Every day in every way, I'm getting better and better. What do you think do I get out of that day in difference to say I have the flu or I say every day in every way, it's getting better and better. And it's funny because in the beginning, I didn't believe that affirmation can make such a difference, but it does, yeah? So just maybe make a note of it. And, and if you don't believe it, read up a little bit more about affirmation, find your personal affirmation, what you can tell yourself every single morning, looking in the mirror and tell yourself, yeah? Because our thoughts are powerful. So what we tell ourselves, our self-speech, yeah? is far more important than what we hear from others. It's nice to get a compliment from somebody else. And sometimes we are not sure if this is just kind or if it's really meant, but powerful what we say to ourselves. And that what we, when we look in the mirror, yeah? This is why I like that song from Michael Jackson so much, the man in the mirror, listen to that lyrics. It's powerful, yeah? Um, yeah, and, and then I wanted to share with you, talking about Robin Banks, for example, I was there for a two-day training, and this was um, two years ago, um, and did that walk on the fire. This is actually why I went to that training, was I wanted to walk on the fire, because I didn't believe that I can walk on fire. I thought this, this is, there's some fake in that whole story, even when, when all the top motivational trainers do it all over the world. Uh, Anthony Robbins and what they are all. So I, I just wanted to do it. And um, so it came finally to that point that we did the walk on the fire. And there's actually a metaphor behind it. Is anybody, any one of you has done that already, walking on the fire? Okay. And this course, but I haven't done that. Okay. So basically, you have the first day where you talk a lot about um, your goals and your vision, what you have for your life. So to get clarity actually about your purpose and your goals in your life. And when you go back to my personal development story, uh, to my personal story, what I shared earlier on, where I was talking about Jim Ron and the 50 goals and da, da, da. It's so important because it took me through my first part in my herbal life journey. But at, along the way, because from these 50 goals, you're not going to believe it. I found one day the list. It was eight, nine years after we have started in Herbalife, I found that book again where I wrote down all the goals. I could tick off everything. On that list was, I want to live in a, in a house close to the sea, overlooking the sea, going every morning on the beach. I wanted to have lots of shoes with matching handbags. So there were silly things on it and great things on it. I wanted to invite my parents to live with me in that house. I wanted to buy the tickets for my parents and my parents-in-law because they were fighting against us that we don't do have a life. So this was on my personal mission, yeah. So I could tick all the boxes basically, but I forgot I need a new goal. I need new goals for my life, yeah. So that, that training was very powerful to realize, hey, I got everything, but now it's time for new goals basically, also because my life had changed. So anyhow, so this was basically the first day. And the second day when it came to that fire, they made a huge fire and there were the coals and they laid out that path with the, with the um, uh, coals basically where you had to walk on. And I thought, Shh, I'm not going to do that. I, I was really all of a sudden scared, fearful to walk on that fire because, I mean, we know that put your hand on a stove, it's hot and you burn yourself. So when I walk now on coals, what the heck, I, I burn my feet. So I made sure that I'm not the first one. 
So we were queuing up basically. There were a couple of groups, yeah. So I was watching the others. So I was the third actually in line. So I thought when the first two burn their feet, then I'm definitely not going. And they explained to us what to do. And um, the first one walked and they worked not too fast. So I thought rather run through, they walked slow. And I was impressed. They didn't burn, they didn't shout, they didn't scream. Only when they were at the other end, they were like, yeah, 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 I did it. So that was stimulating me now. Yeah. The next one walked and now it was on me. I was sweating. I was nervous because I didn't know what happens when I put my foot now down on the hot coals. And that trainer actually who arranged that special firewalk that was not dropping banks on its own. This is a specialized person into that kind of thinking. He said, you don't look down. You don't look on the coals. Look across this person. So he put a person there. This person is your goal. This is what you want to achieve. You look at your goal. You look at your goal. So he was shouting at me and say, you look at your goal. Don't look down. You look at your goal. So he was shouting the whole time. And he said, go. And I started to walk. And I was just now looking at my goal. So I had all of a sudden on my mind, my goal, everything what I wrote down the day before, the way I see myself in the future. And I walked and I walked and I walked. I didn't feel anything. No blister, no nothing. After me, the next person who walked, you could see, see she, she's fearful. The trainer did the same to her what he did to me. What did she do? She looked down and started to walk. She burned, she jumped off the fire. And only later he explained. So he helped that person. So it was really very hard work to get that person not to look down. So what we do mostly in life, and this is what I wanted to share with you, we look at the problem and the problem burns us. Whereas when we look at where we want to go and focus only where we want to go, this is the only way you succeed. So the more you focus on, I have a problem, I have a problem, I have a problem, I don't get enough customers, I don't get enough members, my parents are dead, or my spouse is dead, my ba 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 ba, it becomes bigger and it burns you. You know that where energy, where focus goes, energy flows. This is exactly the same. You know that even from the Formula One racing, um, for, Formula One racing cars, I don't know if you're into that stuff, um, I like Formula One, yeah? If they focus on the wall where they don't want to drive on, you know, when they are on a circuit, you know where they end up? On the wall. wall. And, and because they are under pressure, yeah? Driving a, a, a racing car very, very fast, you have a very short span only to react. They need to be focused on where they want to go, not where they don't want to go. But what do we most do most of the life? We focus on what we don't want to have. And this makes us often stuck. So this is a little bit from me personal. Um, I think it's almost nine o'clock. Um, I, I want to give you just maybe uh, the possibility to, to check a little bit or give me some feedback or, or if you have a question. I mean, I'm not... The, the, the top personal trainer or, or motivational trainer or anything like that. This was more from my heart, what moves me and, and what makes me so excited actually, because we are really the designer of our life. Jim Ron was Thank saying you. that often. Design your life, how you want to have your life. Yeah? Don't, don't compare yourself with others. Maybe that's another note you want to make. We compare ourselves too much with others, yeah? And you see on social media, so many things. Social media is really beautiful,
But we look at social media, now we feel all of a sudden our car is not worth enough anymore, or this is not worth enough anymore, or others are the happy family and I don't have a family. Yeah, now I feel all of a sudden not worth anymore, or I can't build a business because I don't have two kids to show and I'm not pregnant at the moment or whatever. So I make it a little bit funny, but you know what I mean by that. Yeah. So we we we, we must have a clear understanding from who am I? And how do I see my life? And how do I want to move forward in my life? But, but, but whatever is your goal in your, in your herbal life life, but also in your personal life, in your financial life, have your goals what makes you feel, that's me. And that's what I want to have. And keep that in mind. You walk on that fire path, but don't look down. Look at the person you want to become. And that walking is basically the metaphor what we do every single day. We have to walk, we have to move forward. The moment you stand, you stand on the hot coals, you burn the feet. You have to move, you have to move, yeah? So if you're in a situation where you feel unhappy, you have to move, you have to do something. If you stay there, if you sit on your bum, you do nothing or lie in bed and you do nothing, you get stuck, you burn the feet. So over to you. Any questions, any comments? Thank you, that was here? amazing. I so much love that um, what you are saying that your thoughts are so much, um, you know, and that you that you can learn to control that and to focus on gratitude and, you know, attracting the right things in your life. So I think, that, you know, that is one of the things that I so totally uh, love. I've, I think the most powerful book I read when I started Herbalife was um, th um, Money, Success and You of John Keogh. And I love Robin Banks' trainings. So those of you that have not read that book, I would really encourage you. I think it's it's easy read. It's got short little pages, um, but really, really powerful. So thank you for that. Um, we can maybe take one or two questions. I know it's already nine o'clock. Um, who wants to go first? Please put up your hand. Hi, Via. I don't actually have a question. I just want to say thank you very much because I'm just, I've written down so many notes now, but you just, yeah, you just have to focus on your goal and your feet won't burn. And I think that's one of the big thing, things we sometimes just focus on what we're doing wrong and not focusing on, on that end goal and the person you want to become. So thank you for that. And I'll definitely go do my homework. I don't know if I will have 50 goals, but I'll try to reach 50. <laughs> Awesome, thank you so awesome. much for your time thank you. tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback, Emily. Anyone else? Any questions? Some of the newbies? Raina, do you have a question? She doesn't. It looks like she's frozen. Denise, anybody else? You will have a question for Bia? I just wanted to say, I think I was also in a training. I can't remember if it was Marcus Lehman or Jim Rome, maybe in Sun City, where you said, write down your 50 goals. I didn't get to 10. And I think it's maybe a thing of my generation that we were never taught to dream. And it's something that Herbalife taught me and you've just installed that even more tonight. So maybe if I can't write, write down 50, I'll try and make 15 or 20 tomorrow. So thanks, Bea. Let's go for 25, half of them, okay? <laughs> Can we all sign up for 25 goals? <laughs> if, if I may say that, the power is actually when you really write down 50. Yeah, okay. Because the, the interesting part for me was what I learned there is in the beginning, you write down the car you want to have or the, the house you want to have. So the more obvious things. But the moment you get stuck a little bit, actually, you learn more about yourself. The small things, actually, which makes you tick. Or, you know, it's not a goal is not always related to money. It's maybe the country you want to travel to. It's maybe the gift you want to make to yeah. somebody. Yeah. Um, it's it's maybe the the language you want to learn. So it's it's not always materialistic or maybe the contribution you want to make when you feel you have enough money 
you want to build a church or you want to give a donation to an uh, uh, orphanage or I don't know, but it, it's quite interesting. The, the, the more you go actually into the 50, yeah, the more you, you, you learn really more about yourself and even small things what makes you tick. Yeah? You, you're going to laugh now because I was at that stage. So what else, what else, what else? And this was still early, early days. And you're going to laugh now, I know that. But anyhow, I tell you, I had really that goal that I have plenty of shoes and plenty of matching handbags. I mean, it's silly, yeah? And I see Virgil here, he's laughing now his butt off. But, um, <laughs> but for me at that time, it, it was also, it was actually, I learned later on when I thought about it, it was for me having that financial freedom that, you can that I can have plenty of shoes with matching handbags. There was that I can go to restaurants and not looking anymore on the right hand side at the price, what I want to eat that I just choose and say, I like this. And yes, I would like to have a salad and yes, a glass of champagne, please. And and not thinking about what is the bill at the end of the day. Yeah. So that might be, and, and this came only out the longer I need to, to search now, what what is what what would I like to have? So don't think too big. It's it's sometimes the small things, and behind the small things, it's it's more that that you can breathe, that you have the money for it. If you would buy it then or not, yeah. I mean, if I I have lots of handbags, but if you know me, I have mainly one handbag with me because it troubles too much to sort it out all the time and put the stuff from here to there. But that that having the the freedom that you can do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So maybe go through that trouble if you want to do the homework. We'll challenge each other for 50. Uh -huh. We'll challenge each other. Okay. Uh -huh. and, and <laughs> okay. If you want to, if you get to that point that you have your 50, send me a message. Most of you have my telephone number or Elsa, you can give my uh -huh. telephone number or tell it Elsa. Uh -huh. Tell me, I've got my 50. I give you another exercise what Shimon did then with us. That was the, the interesting part, actually. But he shared it only with the people who had 50. This and is why 50. I can't share it now. Okay. okay. All right. We'll do the 50. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Bayo. That was amazing. Really, really so special. And thank you for just sharing so much detail of your story. You know, it's. I'm looking forward to us having a nice glass of champagne somewhere in the waterfront sometime soon. I think we need to arrange something. You know, love that idea. Yeah. Also, you have the best ideas at this time of the evening. I okay. definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting to the end of the fifty list. <laughs> Design some lifestyle things. Um, okay, guys, thank you so much. Well done for everybody that qualified, and thank you again, Bia. It was very, very special. Appreciate you. Thanks again time. for having me, and all the best to all of you. And stay Bye. healthy, stay well, Bye. and lots of love to your families as well. Thank you. Thank you.